when I was in Europe at school, I was 12 and 13. In Europe, we had read a lot of, for an American child, very advanced things, books and so forth. And they didn't know what grade to put me in ever. And I went to college when I was 15. I graduated from college when I was 18. And all these privileges for being so young, I went to Washington University. And that's when I thought I'd like to be a doctor. But um, I didn't go through with that. Why? Well, because I couldn't get along with chemistry mostly. And so I I changed. I switched and went to French literature and various things like that. And my father wanted me to go to college out of town because he didn't want me to be near my mother. And the first college I went to out of town was the University of Illinois, which I loved for some reason. Got along very well there. But I couldn't take dancing lessons, and that was when I was very ambitious to dance. So I went to Chicago. I went to the University of Chicago. And I stayed there for three quarters. You, you had, you couldn't graduate unless you had been there for three quarters. And, um, then I devoted myself to dancing. And I was still in Chicago, and I took dancing lessons. I lived in Chicago for about four years. Well, I was too old, really, to be a professional dancer, but I, I started dancing, seriously dancing, when I was around 16 or something, which is too old, much too old. I had very good teachers, but I wasn't very good. And uh, I went to dancing school. Let's see, I was 18 when I graduated, and I danced for a couple of years nonstop. I went out to California, and I lived with my father for a while, and... My mother came out there, and she lived in a hotel. Poor thing. She just sort of followed me around. It was terribly sad. Paul, when we were talking about it, he, he said that he felt so sorry for Mother, and I, I never knew that. Never knew that. And I had a lot of wonderful teachers in Hollywood. I had Adolf Bohm, who was a, a great character dancer. Bohm's son went to Todd Seminary, the same school that Orson Welles and Paul went. The thing is, I really started too, too late to be a, a professional dancer. But I did get into the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo and, um, with two other girls who were studying with the same teachers and we all went back to New York where they were, that's where the Ballet Russe was performing, and um, lived in lived in terrible boarding houses. I mean, New York has very special boarding houses, and uh, continued to take lessons. Then the company closed down. Then I stopped, and they all the, the dancers from New York went back to Europe. And I just, that's when I decided to quit dancing. Very soon after that, I had a love affair with a man named Heinz Norden, whose sister worked at, uh, at the Office of War Information. And she got me a job there. And there I was divinely happy. And I worked there for five, almost five years. Because everybody who was anybody, all the French people who came to America, which there are a great many, came to the Office of War Information and worked there. Jean-Paul Sartre used to come there. People came there and gave papers and gave 
this, that, and the other thing. And I was there for almost five years, and I just adored it. And then Simone de Beauvoir turned up, and she had been his mistress for years, Sartre's mistress. And then she... Everybody kept going back to Europe and coming back again, and, and Simone de Beauvoir and Sartre had been, I guess, lovers for some time, and then they continued to be until I don't remember how they broke up, but then they, then she met Nelson, and then it was Nelson. I mean, this sounds like a lot of changes, and it was, but it was over a period of many years, you know. I was a translator, and my my friend Heinz, whose sister got me this job, he came home very quickly, and by that time, he was in the war, and he, I, he very suddenly came home, and because he got word of the fact that I was in love with somebody else, which was the case. It was the big love of my life, and Heinz realized right away that I was no longer interested in him. And I was interested in the other man for about two years, but he was married. His name was Robert Franck. And, um, oh, how did I fall in love with him? At the office, he worked there too. He was an, he was a painter too. And he had a studio near the office where he could go when he wasn't talking on the radio. And we used to go over there to his studio. And he, ta he talked over the radio to France, reported on all the doings in America. And he still was doing it up until just a few years ago. Well, all, all sorts of people. Andre Breton did the same thing. Well, he was very charming and he, he, he liked me and he, he was also, he did the same thing as Robert did. He was talked in French to the French, you know, all about America. And, uh, I was crazy about hats. I always have been. And every time I came into the office, Carrying a little hat box, Breton would call me over and said, let me see it. <laughs> he was very interested in my hats. And, uh, he was a very fascinating man. I mean, all these really famous people were working at this. And, uh, I was so thrilled to know all these famous people and then Sark and all the French people who spoke spoke any English and French together worked there, so it was a very elite office. And I stayed there until it closed. And we had a wonderful time. We were all, everybody was very sociable and um, lots of parties, lots of lovers, lots of this, that, and the other thing. Uh, to me, it was a continual party. That's why I liked it. Well, what do you want to know about Nelson? He was a very odd person. Had his moments of sweetness, but he was very, very difficult. You never knew what you were going to run into when you talked to him. I knew Nelson when I lived in Chicago, when I went to school there, and knew all of his friends. And um, then the war came, and he went to war. And I never thought about him again. We weren't close friends or anything. And then one day, I got a letter from him, just out of the blue. And I hardly remembered who he was, but I felt 
obligated to answer this letter. And that was how our affair started off. Then he came back to America. It was after the war. And I called him and got in touch with him. And we started seeing each other. I was just visiting there. And, uh, I mean, we were a large crowd. When I met him or saw him again, we all would go to the beach. I mean, there were nine or ten of us, you know. He took me to the train, and I was no sooner on the train than I realized I was madly in love with him. And I wrote to him from New York. We wrote quite frequently, but I know that when I got back to New York, there was a lot of calling back and forth. He was really... Scared to death of love, I think. I mean, it's very odd. And um, I remember strangely when I was visiting Chicago, he introduced me to his mother. There was some very, I think he felt that he should have married me. Well, our relationship came first. But um, I knew him long before she knew him. <laughs> so strange to imagine those two together. He told me a story later about how Simone de Beauvoir called him up. I don't remember the circumstances. And he he didn't know who she was exactly. And he... He thought it was somebody fooling him. Then finally they made some sort of arrangement to meet each other, which he did. I was back in New York. They met in Chicago. She was, she was traveling around and interviewing people and so forth. Oh, I became aware of it and I, I was very unhappy about it, and I, we just separated. We just no longer had anything to do with each other. Anyway, what happened to that relationship was just what happened to mine, except that he, his lasted longer with, with Simon. And, uh, he was very nasty to her, very mean to her, very cold. And they, he just couldn't, he couldn't maintain a relationship of any kind, certainly not a romantic one. 